Hey, what's going on guys? So, uh, the two player starter set got officially revealed by content creators today and we got to see the entire contents of both these starter decks in this two player starter set. We also got to see a little bit of the comic book that is a scripted duel between the two decks which I don't know who wins, but it, it basically goes through the entire deck and allows both players to get a feel for what the game is like and to sort of like get a simple understanding of how to play the game. Before we get into the issues, I should speak on why this set is a necessity for the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And that's mostly because we have been failing as a as a game to bring in new players. Starter decks used to be every year, right? Like it used to be 20, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, like 2016, 2017, Code Breaker, this one was 2018. And then after 2018, we didn't get another starter deck for another three years, 2021. Now it's 2024. It's been another three years since, since the last starter deck. So we have been failing to create products to bring people into the game. And the reason why I say that is because I actually started with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Deck 5Ds, which came out in 2008. This was my very first starter deck. Before this, I was buying random packs of Light of Destruction, hoping to pull more of the Arcana Force deck. That was like my real first like archetype. But ultimately, when I got this starter deck, this is when I really started gaming in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really loved this deck. I loved its theme. I loved the fact that it was synchro theme and that like I could use Junk Warrior like you say in the anime. And it was relatively decent for its time. I know there are, you know, duds in here, like, you know, the normals, uh, like Frequency Magician. No one's using Synchro Boost or Twister or Synchronized Realm. No one's using a lot of these cards, but there are also other cards that were pretty decent for their time. Like Scrap Iron Scarecrow was decent for its time. Seven Tool, decent for its time. Exiled Force with Priority, pretty decent for its time. Junk Synchron, decent for its time. Marauding Captain, decent for its time. Mystic Tomato UFO Turtle, decent for its time. Copycat, pretty decent for its time. Even the Synchros, Colossal Fighter, it was a menace back in the day as a Synchro Monster. And although there was no way to like turbo out in this deck, like first turn, it was still very possible to bring it out, right? And so this deck had a lot of access to cards that were pretty good for their time. And then I want to talk about Starter Deck Exceed Symphony. This was another deck that although Again, it's a starter product. Of course, it's not gonna be meta, but you could have created a deck that was decent for its time. You start off with a card like Alexandrite Dragon, 2000 beater, Go 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 Giant, 2000 beater, that could summon more copies of itself from Graveyard. So it could either become a, a beater or it can overlay into one of your rank fours, which my stroke are one of the best exceeds of its time until Castell and 101 came out and kind of power crept this. But like, I don't even remember the amount of time, but it, there was a good like few months or so where my stroke was like the best card of its time or the best exceed of its time. So, and even Musa Rhythm, it was the best rank three because it got to double its attack, become 3000 during the battle phase, which power crept Leviathan Dragon. Leviathan Dragon could only go up to 2500 the first turn that, that was summoned. So these were actually like decent exceeds. And you know, um, even though like the actual deck in itself, it's like, okay, maybe, you know, seven tools not as popular by this point or, uh, MST. I guess it was still used at, at this point, but it wasn't as popular. Um, I don't think so. I think MST was still the best uh, back row removal. A lot of these cards were kind of outdated, but like what you could do is you can get three of the starter deck, play cards like dry, like Triple Alexandrite, Triple Go 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 Giant, Triple Goblin Bird, Triple Marauding Captain, Triple Giant Rat, and like Shining Angel, uh, Sangan, maybe a Penguin Soldier to, to, to style on the haters. And you could have gotten like a pretty decent beatdown deck for its time. It's good for starters. And as you grow as a player, you could realize what your most optimal cards are and then take out the ones that don't matter as much. So when I look at this two player starter set and I saw Zeus and Manadium Prime Heart and we saw like Visa Star Frost and I thought, you know, like Gaga Magician, which is, it's a little slow, but you know, if it's in the right frame, it could be used pretty well. And then we see the actual decks and I'm, I'm a little saddened because 
it just feels like okay like there being vanillas is not a big deal like if there was just like a few vanillas you know dark magician which doesn't make sense within the context of this deck like there's no sense of strategy here there's no sense of coherency it's really just they want you to play the game the way that they expect you to why is ojama yellow here it's not like okay you have star changer but like it's not gonna help you nine nine times out of ten unless you open a very specific card in your deck you know like there's no coherency between how all all of this comes together to build your exceed monsters unless your opponent doesn't know how to play the game you look at the synchro side of things i think the synchro side's even worse <laughs> um you got another ojama you have like literally if dd crow and visa starfrost wasn't in this deck there is almost there is no card in this deck that is being used in 2024 like other than coral dragon visas and dd crow and i just it's hard for me to comprehend that they wouldn't add something that's still usable today right like cards in 2024 need to say negate because what do you do against an evenly matched with a deck like this you kind of just lose like how do you deal with removal or how do you deal with you know combo decks and stuff like that like there's 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 way less answers here for for our time in Yu-Gi-Oh, right and the the craziest thing is is that this is a scripted duel made to teach people how to play the game yet there's no fusion link and pendulums involved i get that like okay you you want to keep it simple and that you don't want to over overload people with knowledge but like in what's the point then you know like if they're only going to learn these two mechanics the synchro and exceed which it's funny that stardust and utopia which are two very recognizable synchro and exceed monsters are just not in this deck for some reason but you could find the the, the, the place to put a dark magician but you couldn't find place for a stardust dragon or or a utopia it's really like frustrating to see something like this because i understand that like wanting to bring people into the game is important and that like starter sets are important but like when starter decks are not good when they don't actually give people cards that can do something like at least transcode came in this thing right like at least transcode came in this if we go back to some of the previous starter decks like the starter decks were really kind of like good until maybe because this one came with like the first set, set of Exceed monsters, so that one was good. Exceed Symphony, I explained, was good. Maybe until like Yugi Reloaded or like V for Victory. Like 2013 is when the starter decks kind of started to fall off because they just weren't giving players enough. Like uh, this Pendulum starter deck, just it just wasn't good enough. And then everything after this, this is just forgettable, probably not good enough. Like they were just too afraid to, to print cards that actually did something. At least this one came with like Decode and Link Spider, which everyone used for a while. Starter decks should contain more cards that are like usable in 2024 or in the in the year that they're made. Or at least create some sort of coherent strategy to where like if this person improves as a player, there's almost no cards in here that they would actually bring into another deck is kind of the point that I'm making. Whereas again, if you improve as a player with this deck in 2008, you're still, you still might be using Junk Synchron. You still might be using Marauding Captain or Exile Forest or Copycat. I see a lot of people use Copycat and like uh, Edison, Mystic Tomato. I know Scrap Iron was good. I know Threatening Roar is good. I know Seven Tools is good. I know Divine Wrath is good. So that's why it's hard for me to comprehend why these um, starter sets are so mid. Um, there are definitely plenty of cards that are viable. Like, Golden Lord is kind of a step in the right direction. Like, Golden Lord and Visas were steps in the right direction. But why give them goddamn, I don't know, like, backup rider? You know? Like, they they gave you the worst Medadium monster. They gave you Card Trooper. Card Trooper adds nothing to this strategy. Like, a Quobo Hedgehog with no, like, barely fucking 10 tuners in the deck. And... There's no, there's not enough even levels between all the synchros to fully take advantage of it. Like if you open Bar Barrier Resonator plus Quobalt Hedgehog, what are you supposed to do? Nothing. You're, you're kind of just stuck. Like there's just too much that's, that can go wrong playing a deck like this. And it just doesn't feel good to like, look at this and be like, man, I just feel like these people are getting screwed. I guess Exceed Reborn is a decent one for, for the Exceed deck, but in in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like trap cards are too slow. Like you got to put 
more powerful trap cards. At least put like some counter trap cards in here that teach people about speed spells um, and stuff like that. Like, because like, look, if, 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 if me as a little kid in 2008 could understand that a counter trap cannot be responded to except with other counter traps, I don't see why these, you know, gen, gen alphas and uh, <laughs> kids couldn't understand that uh, how, how counter traps work. It just feels like the, these these decks are way too weak. I appreciate the diversity and like what they were trying to do, but it just feels like a slap in the face. It's kind of like the very beginning of Master Duel. I, I just think it doesn't um, do well for teaching people what they actually have to deal with when it comes to playing the real game. Uh, because it will take people time to become meta relevant or to make their decks like meta, but like how many cards in this deck will you actually keep in if you were to try to take this deck to a tournament like you wouldn't keep a lot of these cards in you wouldn't keep in any of these normals maybe trade in that there's only like one level eight monster in your deck oh my god uh skill you wouldn't keep in skill successor you'd probably keep in call uh you wouldn't keep in thousand knives because that's way too risky because you're not playing a dark magician deck uh, how many level threes are in the deck? Like three of them? What the fuck's Crane Crane doing? Or I guess four, Giant Soldier of Stone. Uh, Curion the Mage comes back. Like this is a card from two from 2012. Like why is a card from 2012 still in this fucking structure deck that, I mean starter deck? And you know, like I feel the, um, this structure deck, I feel would have been a way better starter set than what we gotten. So you guys know how in nationals they do those scripted duels with the actual Yu-Gi-Oh characters. So in the scripted duel of nationals last year, it was super heavy samurai versus red dragon archfiend. Both of those decks good, good for their time because red dragon archfiend, it's like you can make this deck optimal. Yes. You, you know, it, it crutches entirely on soul resonator and you know, they should fix that in the future, which they will, they will fix that in the future. But, um, there's a lot of cards in this deck that could easily have taught you like game mechanics and like uh, giving you interesting ways to learn the game. You know, like th there's a good variety of cards here where I feel like this would have been a better start for someone just learning up the game just picking up the game. Like this deck feels like it was made for people to get into the game and to learn how to play. And it locks you into synchro pretty early. So you don't have to worry about learning other game mechanics. Like a lot of these, um, uh, like soul resonator locks you into synchro pretty early. I think bone archfiend also locks you into synchro pretty early in your turn. So most times you don't need to worry about learning how to link summon or learning how to, you know, at least it takes advantage of that fact, you know, like, like, like the branded structure that even, you know, taught you how to, uh, locked you into fusion pretty early in your turn so you didn't have to worry about how to play um other card mechanics because i feel like if you want someone to learn the entire game with a set but then you don't include all the card mechanics that are possible in the current tcg where are they supposed to learn how to fusion link and pendulum summon then where are they supposed to learn it at because if 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 not in here then why create a set like this I think what would have been better if is if like if the deck had a little more uh, versatility as to how it could be played, like if it played some generic fusion monsters, link monsters are generic, and some like a handful of pendulum monsters in your deck so that if you had a pendulum scale, you could pendulum summon, right? You could have scripted a duel like that. I could I, like that. That seems really easy to, 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 to put together. Just slap a polymerization in your deck, slap something that's like relatively generic you know, uh, like Starving Venom, you know, that just requires two dark monsters on the field, have a bunch of dark monsters in the deck and have something a little more themed so that people aren't just getting like just the, the bare minimum of thought on learning how to play the game because you will never get anywhere just throwing cards together like this. There has to be strategy. I want new players to succeed and to thrive and to get into the game, but treating Yu-Gi-Oh like it's like we're back in like generally 20 fucking 12 was it? yeah like treating Yu-Gi-Oh like we're back in 2012 is not going to help people get into the game and learn how to master the game it's only going to do them a disservice and yes I know I just said that we need more starter sets but we need them to be decent we need them to be optimal I should be able to look at 
a, you know how people make uh, videos about like, oh, how to make the best deck out of three structure decks. I should be able to do that with a starter deck as well. I should be able to do that. But for some reason, I, Konami just completely dropped the ball on this. If anything, I think the best deck between these two sets is somewhere in the middle. I think like the best things in this set are if you took like the best of both worlds, you could probably get something half decent. But assuming that you want someone to split this set down the middle with like a friend of theirs or something and then both play together seems really mid. Like this set should be something a little more like the battle packs. Something like a draft set like this where there's an array of like really good cards for their time. Look at this Cyber Jar, Witch of the Black Forest, Jinzo, Dark Dust Spirit, uh, Gores, Goddamn Caius, Trigodia, Tour Guide. Utopia, Le Leviathan Dragon, Harpy's Fetter Duster, well, which, you know, so a lot of these were banned, but <laughs> a Solemn's, a Mirror Force, Skill Drain. This is a way better two player starter set because at least it gives people the, the, the apex of what the game is like at the time. You know, like these are some of the best cards in the in the game at the time this was created. Like, yes, yeah, scores may have fallen out of favor, like maybe like a year or two after this this set was made but it was good for its time Caius still pretty good at, dur during this time in, in, in the game uh tour guide amazing still a pretty half decent card today um and then you know even even some of the band well i guess the band cards of course they were great uh potter duality pretty great card for its time Divine Wrath, still pretty good. I, I mean, well, nobody uses it, but it's still, you know, because Solemn Strike exists. <laughs> but even then, it's like, it, it's 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 still a usable card for its time. Dark Bribe, usable card for its time. Trunch Tribute, usable card for its time. Like, this would have been a better two-player starter set. Something like this. Going, going into the future. And, like, none of this, none of these cards are, like, insanely complex. Like, there's no way that, like, Gores is hard to understand. You know, comparatively to something like uh, Visa Starfrost or like Zeus, you know, uh, like like Eldritch the Golden Lord is kind of difficult to understand if you haven't like read a card like that before. Like, look at how many cards here have like blocks of text, like uh, these Manadium monsters and like Visa Starfrost and some of these synchros. Like, th they have like paragraphs of, of text. I don't think Gorse is any harder to understand. Uh, compared to this if anything this card's pretty straightforward into how it's like used um even a card like ancient gear golem rather than just stuffing vanillas into the deck or like maybe your higher level monster should should have been more like stuff like ancient gear golem that's like just generically you know if you were to tribute some of this this would actually be something of a threat to the opponent <laughs> It's like, well, I can't let this thing go into battle phase. This set has cards that say negate on them because if your opponent has a card that's just too strong, there are too many cards that nowadays that are just really strong. You need something that says negate on it. Solemn Judgment would have been a perfect card, you know, to put in, in a deck like this. I really like this first battle pack the most. The later battle packs, I don't like as much. Uh, oh yeah, there, there's even more in this set. Look, old old vindictive magician, exiled force, snowman either, which again really good cards for their time. Chalice was really good back then. Enemy controller is still good. Reckless greed, really good card back then. Fiendish chain was fucking broken. Morphing jar, which I think morphing jar was limited. It might not have been banned at that point. Zephyros really good for its time. Goblinberg. No, oh, yeah, this random thing. Green cap. <laughs> yeah, like Raiko, Offerings to the Doomed would have been funny. Well, it's it wasn't good for its time, but it's 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 a decent funny card. This should have been their example, you know, and then we got like our, our big body vanilla, so like big attack, big defense. Nothing like Ojama Green that has no strategy, no place in a deck, no stats, no real reason to be there. So many like cool cards that could have been like you could easily make like a decent strategy deck out of this stuff and or starter deck out of this stuff. I feel like this is what they should have been inspired to use instead of just throwing some random vanillas together and like scripting the most probably looking at this decks and probably the most mid duel of all time. Like just 
just being fucking objective. These decks just look like complete garbage. God forbid you shuffle them. You're bricking like nine out of ten hands. <laughs> like are are nearly unplayable with the ratios in this deck. So I don't know. I think what they should have done is this looks more like a speed duel product. This doesn't like this is how maybe they should have introduced synchros and exceeds into speed duel since I know they're only on fusions right now. The speed duel would have loved a set like this. Like this could actually work in speed duel, and you you know you take out a lot of this redundant shit um, between the two the the, the 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 two decks, and this could have been a really good speed duel set. But for the modern TCG, you can't keep things too simple for too long. Things are going to get complicated. Rulings are hard. Uh, playing against decks are hard. It's very it's a very interaction heavy game, and pretending like people play vanillas just for the sake of playing vanillas or attacking directly is going to get you anywhere is not a good way to start the game it's it just feels like a waste of a product so usually i don't feel this strongly about stuff but like i i, I like this just this just had to get out there the only real good thing to come from this set is the fact that zeus is getting a pretty affordable reprint because it's going to be in the starter deck so this might go down to maybe like four or five bucks at most but yeah, otherwise, that's been all for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been your boy, Nisho here, signing out.